Hey golfers, and welcome back to another episode of the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. And well, today there's been so much, you know, demand for the return of Larry Bobka <laughs> back on the show, and the the, the Q and A segments with him have been so popular. So we've got another one today, and um, we had to have him back on. So Larry, first of all, thank you for taking the time. I know this is. You mentioned before we started, this is your your day off, and your as you can your, tell, I get your, I've got yeah. I get shorts on. It's hot here. It's it, hot here this, in, in Minneapolis. This is the hottest. I think the hottest day of the year. It's pretty close. Yesterday was bad. It's going to be close. I mean, yeah. I this morning I let the dog out, and my glasses immediately fogged up when I walked outside. So well, it's just that humidity news, factor. The good news is, you know, I lived in Texas for five years when I when I worked for UST, so I'm kind of used to warmer, yeah. hotter weather. But it doesn't know. slap you in the face like it does to me, huh? Well, at, at my age, pretty much everything <laughs> slaps me in the face. I mean, changing seats here kind of slapped That's me. That's true. Yeah, slapped me. You know, you guys kind of threw me for a loop <laughs> being on the left side here versus the right side. So yeah, well, we're just keeping you on your toes. So. I know. Um, but today we've got six questions that we kind of picked from we got a couple that were submitted through twitter a couple through TikTok, and various other platforms okay. but um so we're going to give you an easy one to start okay from aaron says how when and where am i able to schedule a fitting with you larry when and where well i work at the the minnetonka store at, um just outside of minneapolis mm -hmm. um you can go online to secondswing.com and go under fitting and find the Minnetonka store and find me and there you know it it's um, depending on the time of the year it can yeah. be it, it can be kind of tough to to book it you know usually uh, I would tell you usually I'm about this time of year takes about two weeks to to okay. get in and see me so yeah I know your services are in high demand for the most part but I imagine and you get to February March April it gets pretty pretty busy <laughs> yeah, well, and you know, now here in September where a lot of the fitters are kind of relaxing a little bit, you know, since I assistant coach for Minnesota, now the golf season starts. That's true, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. yeah so like I know I you're said, also, you're going, you're traveling to the other stores, doing some training things yeah, and whatnot. Yeah, so. I, you know, I did take one day off in the last two weeks, so I'm, I'm there doing good. There you go, progress. I'm doing, doing good. And another one today and you spend it here anyway, so. Yeah, well, that's okay. <laughs> it's all right. Um, so this is actually kind of what's what sparred this a little bit too in the second question because we've had some talks about long putters yep. and some talks about you know how they can be beneficial for someone struggling and then also Lucas Glover who has kind yep. of recently taken over you know pro golf winning a couple times in a row there right. and you've worked with him so this one's from Willie he asks what's your take on arm lock putters and long putters well you know first of all you know when the band came out for for anchoring mm -hmm. okay so now you you've got you know the style that wasn't banned was was arm lock kind of you know down the arm yep. holding holding the grip there controlling the face a little bit better and everybody kind of forget forgot about long putting for yeah. a while okay because it's like but you looked at guys like bernhard langer scott mccarran some other guys on the Champions Tour, they never got rid of it. They do it. I mean, Stuart Haggis had one yeah. of the best amateurs in the country, mm -hmm. long putts. Yeah. You know, um, then we, you know, it was kind of interesting where now all of a sudden Adam Scott went back to it. Lucas went to it. You know, we got, we, we're going to start selling through handmade sticks, these longbow putters. Well, it kind of came at the same time. A guy by the name of Zach Miller, who played at Stanford, got together with, with David Frisch at Goodwood, who we yeah. know very well, and they brought out these putters. So, it, you know, to me, it's a, it's a great style of yeah. putting, okay? I just worked, actually, Monday morning, uh, spent some time with Jesse Bull, who's one of the best, you know, mid-ams here in, in, the Minnesota, mm -hmm. in Minnesota, qualified for the U.S. mid-am, He's gone to he's gone to the long putter, yeah. and you know we just talked about the things that that I think you need to do to long putt long putt well now that you can't anchor it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, th I know it's it's one of those things that I think it's you look on tour and you see a lot of guys that maybe have struggled with a standard putting method for years and years and. A lot of these guys are great ball strikers. Lucas right. Glover, Adam Scott, even the couple Web, guys you mentioned. Webb Web Simpson. Webb Simpson. These guys that have, yeah. they're, I, you know, year over year, they're the best iron players, best drivers of the golf ball, but they just, it seems like they're costing themselves lots of money on the greens. Right. So 
with the long putting, is it, and obviously now you can't anchor it, but there's still obviously some sort of science behind, you know, the, the method of holding it with your arms, right. not anchoring it, and still finding the, the right putting stroke there. Well, see, I, I think the most important thing to me now is with the long putter. You know, before you could put it to your chest, you could have your arm, and you so you really just kind of created a pivot point, and you just swung yeah, the putter. Right, right. If you're right-handed, you just swung the putter with your right hand. Well, now, since you can't do that, to me, it's really important to create this arm as a lever. Okay? That left arm? Yeah, the left arm. So really, you really want to point your left arm down to your intended target. Because if you don't, if it's somewhere in between, as you're swinging through, that putter's going to want to pull. So now, you're, now your high left hand and your low right hand are going to fight yeah. each other. Okay, the more I can, I can create this to be just straight down the line, now I've created in lever. I mean, you think about the opposite way of short putting. You know, Jack Nicklaus arguably one of the best putters ever, you know, was very open to the line and created a lever with his right hand to mm -hmm. putt, okay? So to me, you always want to have, you want to always have your hands working together, okay? You look at two guys that, two great short putters, Ben Crenshaw and Brad Fax. Mm -hmm. They look like when they put their hands together, they look like they were, you know, they were born... With they're a in putter, harmony. With a putter in there. Yeah, they're in harmony. Yeah. So whatever style you pick, you've got to get both hands in harmony, you know, and that's kind of hard. And that's why you see a lot of players, you know, like Webb Simpson went to went to arm lock and then he saws it. Yeah. Well, what does he do? He's created a lever. Yeah. Okay. My buddy Mark O'Meara, who when he decided that, you know, the right hand was getting a little little uncontrollable would be the term for it he goes to he goes to the saw and yeah. you know and told me you know we're playing and he goes yeah he goes i just i just you know he goes i thought about nicholas and i thought about the lever he had so this just created a lever hmm. so to me right now the secret if you're going to putt long where you can't anchor it is creating this left arm to be your lever mm -hmm. and then now your right arm your right arm can just control just how, long you're, how long you're going to swing it. Hmm. Yeah. So I guess to follow up on that one, and, and you know, I know I don't we don't want to spend the whole time necessarily talking about the long putter piece, but right. also if someone is struggling with their putting um, and they just they've tried everything with the you know the short standard putting, um, what, I guess is the next step to go. I mean, obviously you can go get fit. You can work with a uh, fitter, or is it trying more things? Is it Grabbing a long putter and trying it, how it feels, and what what do you recommend? Well, there? I think you got I think you got to get fit. I mean, you know, bef before we start, I relayed the story of a guy that was there on Sunday and came up to me and he goes, "Hey, you're you're the guy that knows about putting, and I know you've worked with Lucas Glover." And he goes, "I'm putting just terrible." He goes, "I I you know I can't make it from five feet." And he goes, "I've tried arm lock, I've tried everything." I said, "Well, you know, we got a couple of these new long putters we're testing out and." You know, he hit, he hit the one we have here, and it was too long. And um, I actually had the other prototype in the car, and and it was 44 inches versus 48 inches, and he loved it and whatever. And, he, you know, he bought the putter. Yeah. You know, showed him showed him about the lever. The, showed yeah, him, the showed technique him, of it. So I, I think if anything, if you're going to get fit for a putter and you're going to putt unconventionally, you got to go see somebody that understands. Mm-hmm how to use that unconventional right. method, okay? Um, because the technique of it has to be right, otherwise it's a waste of Yeah, just time. just buying this just is buying not, yeah. just buying this is okay. not going to guarantee you're going to make putts. Yeah, and that's the same with arm lock, too. I mean, if you're not using the arm lock length putter correctly. Well, an arm lock, if any... Of any style, I mean, we all know loft's important. Loft is number, when it yeah. comes to putting, loft is absolutely the number one thing, Okay. But we know in arm lock, because depending on when somebody puts it in their stance, arm lock, you got to have the right loft. Yeah. Because if you don't have the right loft, if you don't have enough loft, all you're doing is just driving it in the ground. Right. Or if you tend to want to put it a little bit more up in your stance, a lot of the arm lock putters have a lot of loft. And if you go buy it and all of a sudden you put it in a stance, it looks like you're hitting chip shots. Yeah, yeah. I think that's another, maybe a piece that, 
golfers don't understand is arm lock putters typically have what seven degrees it's about seven, seven six six degrees to seven aloft. degrees yeah. aloft yeah, on versus them. a three three is probably the average yeah for a, any Correct. other standard putter so right. um but yeah i think it's those options are available so if yep. you're struggling with the putting i mean stop into a second swing talk with someone um that there are options out there well and, you know and the other thing too is i mean a lot of times people you know you, you you read stuff on you read stuff on instagram you read stuff on twitter and it's like oh my gosh you know somebody's putting a little long putter you know they should they should have banned it it should make this is about enjoying the game you know i mean at the bottom line is you're not you're not playing for the U.S. Open. You know you might be playing for your club championship, but at the end of the day, you're trying to enjoy it. Yeah. You know, and who cares? And you know my, you know as I've relayed before, you know my great friend Phil Rogers used to say, Larry, it's a, it's a scorecard, not a postcard. You know, there's yeah. no picture, there's no style points. All your job is to get the put the lowest number in the box. Yes. That's so, true. you know, at the end of the day, you know, hey, Sam Sneed for years, you know, he he started to putt bad. He went croquet style between right. the legs till they <laughs> outlawed they that. that. Yeah. Then they then they then he putted for years side saddle. Yeah. You know, nobody walked up to Sam Sneed going, Hey, that looks that, that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't look right. You shouldn't Or they didn't, he should, just didn't care. Yeah, he he didn't care and knowing knowing Sam later in his life. Uh, I know the choice words he would have used for him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's funny. That's yeah. good. But, I mean, yeah, there's there's options out there. And like you said, just get the ball in the hole in the right. fewest amount of time. Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, next one here. This is also kind of a loaded question from J.D. Golfman. Okay. Says, what's the process like when designing a club start to finish? What's the process? Well, the process, the, the number one thing, you know, um, and, and I kind of go back to the days of when I first started to design clubs at Wilson. You know, we always, what we call, we always would have a white paper, which is basically, okay, here's the club. We might not have a name for it, but who's it for? Mm -hmm. You know, what's the, what, what's the number one thing you're doing? Are, are you designing, if it's a set of irons, are you designing it for low handicappers? Are you designing for high handicappers? You know, what's what's the design criteria? Yeah. Then from there, then you kind of go and kind of look and go, okay, well, this is this is what I want. I mean, if you, you look at the LB1 irons, you know, I think there's, you know, I think there's a lot of good blades out there. But, you know, I, I wanted to, you know, I had an opportunity to, you know, put my initials on a golf club and, um, you know, made something that, that looks like older models from the past, looks like newer models from the future or present. And, you know, so you, you, you kind of take all the things you know that you've learned and put it into that design, Yeah. you know, because, uh, you know, like I've said before, I mean, geez, I, you know, I look at some stuff that I did at Wilson and I'm like, holy cow, how the hell did I ever do that? <laughs> you know, I mean, geez, you know, every club looks good, but that, that might be the worst eight iron I've ever seen, you know, and you, you learn. And, and so y you kind of pick who you're, who, who you're after yeah, and then kind of go down the road and, and decide, well, this would be better. That would be better. Um, what kind of what kind of revisions are done for like is it I mean what's that process like in you know you, you've got something that you've you like and then you maybe it's either testing or whatever it might be maybe you get it to feel in your hand and all of a sudden okay this doesn't look right well the first you know the first the first round is the first round is is you know you do the design you know which I do it on blanks and then the company that I have that make the club for me they they make the first run of of heads and you know you take a look at them you go okay well now it's time to now it's time to test them okay well let's test it you know let's throw a couple of them together and hit them and well you know leading edge is digging a little bit maybe it needs a little more bounce maybe the toe's not quite where it needs yeah. to be where so, yeah so there's there's little tweaking that goes on i mean it's never it's never perfect you know you know in I look at my irons and go, oh, is it a perfect set of clubs? Eh, it's, 
it's as perfect as I've done, but it's still it's, close. it's still not perfect. I mean, I can <laughs> still I can still always. I mean, I'm I'm my worst critic. I can always pick this apart, that apart, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so you so it it's really kind of evolution from the from the first idea, from the first design. Then then you kind of just evolve the club into where it is to where you can say, wow, these are these are ready, and that's you know. It's kind of like as you know, I've told the story before. They were the heads were sitting out, heads were sitting out on my desk, and it was the final my in my opinion the final version I was ready to go, and that's when you know Simon, our CEO, came and went, "What are those? Can, <laughs> oh, we, yeah. can we sell those?" <laughs> like, well, yeah, they're they're ready to go. I may set one. Well, you're looking at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah, um, and, you know, and depending on what you're doing. I mean, I think it can take anywhere from six months to two years. Yeah. You know, you look at some of these really intricate designs, like the new Titleist stuff. Yeah. Where, you know, there's tungsten in the bottom and you've got the face and we're trying to, you know, it it, it can take a while, you know. And, and I'm going to tell you, you're not going to see any of those from me because I'm not that smart. <laughs> I'm, not an, I'm not an engineer. I'm a club, I'm a club maker. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to design things that are functional, but are they going to be the latest high tech, high grit? No, it ain't, it ain't ever happening. <laughs> well, you that's know. just, that's what fits your eye too. You're the, that's a classical design. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So it, and they've worked out. I mean, if you haven't hit them yet or haven't tried them, you should, um, the LB ones are both the irons and wedges. They're, yeah, they're well, good, so. you know, I mean, you can't be afraid to try them. I mean, that's the cool part about it. You know, we've got them in the, we've got them in the stores. We got them in our minute talk. I think everybody has at least a, a set or two in the stores. And just you know, just go there and hit them. Mm -hmm. You know, and like I, like I originally thought. I mean, it's maybe it's not your everyday set of clubs. You know, we got a lot of people now ordering partial sets. You yeah. know, playing the half sets like like I play. So, you know. Uh, uh, it's a cool thing for your Sunday bags, you know. Get a get a four six eight pitching wedge. Yeah. Throw them throw them in your Sunday bag with a with a driver and a fairway, and go walk nine holes with it. Okay. I'm still throwing mine on the cart because I'm not walking nine holes anymore. <laughs> Especially on a day like today. But yeah, but I think, but but it's also a really cool thing to practice with too. Mm -hmm. I mean, gee, if I'm going to practice with a blade six iron, and I can hit that pretty well, how much is easier to hit my T100 or my T150 or whatever, you know, it, yeah. it, it's a real, to me, to me, you can't be afraid to try different golf clubs yeah. because you never know what you're going to find. You should never pigeonhole yourself. Well, I'm a 10 handicapper. Well, why are you a 10 handicapper? Well, I don't have distance control. Well, maybe you're playing fast face irons that aren't giving you distance control. Right. You know, that's why it's so, that's why it's so cool. You know, everybody goes, man, you know, you fit the best players in the world and you're, you're working at the Minnetonka store. But, man, I mean, I had a guy, I had a, I had a guy yesterday that just really good player and just, you know, why am I not playing better? Well, you got a club that one time goes 190 yards is your seven iron and the next wing goes 172 and the next two are somewhere in between. Yeah. You bring them in a, you bring them in a, a I'll give the brand and bring him in a ZX7 and, yeah. he, and all of a sudden everything flies 178, 177, 176. He's like, what'd you do? And I'm like, just, just give you the right club. Give you the right club. Yeah. Give you the right club and the right <laughs> shaft. I mean, yeah. it's just, you know, honestly, it's, sometimes it's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Know? They yeah. don't know they're as good as they are. So, yeah. That's yeah. interesting. You don't think of, you know, hitting blades as like a, training thing but that's something that i know i think i'm gonna take that with me too because i could i could probably use that so um here's another one from charles we got a couple left here we got one okay. here for this is from charles um asking about putters again okay um so there's a lot of talk about blades and mallets he's asking yep. our square backs you know the like the half moons mid mallet type putters um are those just kind of in the middle ground or is there you know in a fitting when where do those you know well fit you, into the you have to look at it this way Okay, and I, I look at it by, basically by moment of inertia, mm -hmm. okay? So, I, you know, like I said, I'm not gonna, this is about as technical as I get here. <laughs> but if you, t if you do the moment of inertia, okay, the resistance of the twist of a yeah. blade putter, 
it's somewhere around 5,000, 5,500, yeah. depending on the model. Okay. Now you take, you take a spider, you take some of the Odyssey stuff, the big mallets, back weights, you're, you know, you're 8,000 plus. Yeah. You know, even roll came out with one, I think, that, that was like 10,000. Okay. So the mid mallets, because the center of gravity moves back a little bit, tend to be somewhere in between. They're 6,500 okay. to maybe 7,000. So they're more forgiving than a blade, but they're not as forgiving as some of the, yeah. you know, some of the spaceship looking things. Okay. Well, you know, now I, you know, I saw an Instagram post of all the, the top guys putting, you know, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of mallets being used yeah. by the top players right now. Well, you know, Scotty Scheffler kind of goes up and back. Right now, he hasn't had a great putting year. Working with a spider, putted pretty good with it at Olympia Field. Yeah, you know, you'll see guys go up and back. You know, you look at some of the the Scotty Cameron wing models, and Scotty, I apologize, I I can't remember any of your model names anymore, but it's the one. It looks like a blade with the two wings coming yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. You know, kind of like a. Kind of like an Odyssey Seven. Yeah. Well, those still have those still are fairly face forward. Those aren't as forgiving as those aren't as forgiving yeah. as you know the eight thousand. Those are in the six thousand, okay. seven thousand range. So, you know, really, it's about to me about if you're picking a putter. It's based on feel, okay, and feel is the construction. The sound coming off that putter, you know, I, I still have my, I still have my ping that I played in high school and college and made a whole bunch of putts with, and and you know that was a very crashing sound, especially with the slit in the sole. I mean, you're hitting that ball and it, you know, why is the company named Ping? Yeah, because that's the sound the club the, made. <laughs> yeah. You know, so you, you know it's a very crash. So if I don't have that crashing sound kind of scares me a little bit, mm. you know? I, I, I don't think that I hit it hard enough. Where you get other people that just love the softer feel, they love the Odyssey feel, yeah. you know? And then there's, there's a bunch of putters in between. So from that standpoint, to me, that's, that's what you gotta pick. Then you gotta look at length, okay? Once I got you in the right length, then we dial in your loft. I mean, that's the whole reason we use Quintex. I mean, it, it, it you know, if you're not using if you're not using a Quintec to fit you for a putter, you you really kind of you're blind. Okay? It's just a, it's more of a guess. I mean, yeah, it's like walking it's like walking into a bay at second swing, and I'm going to fit you for a driver, and you're just going to hit it into the into the screen, screen and, and get man. and get no TrackMan numbers. <laughs> you know, you'd be like, that felt good. Well, how do you know? How do you know? <laughs> well, you know well, well, it hit here, it hit there, it hit you know doesn't make any sense. I mean, there's too much technology out there right now to get in, and, and, you know, and not to pat myself on the back, but I mean, I can't tell you the people that walk in the store and just go, you know, hey, I haven't seen you in two years, but putters, you fit me for two years. You go, I, I've never putted better in my life. You know, mm -hmm. I just, you know, just saw it and you wanted to say thank you because they have, they finally have the right putter. Yeah. You know, it's like I had a guy the other day, you know, my analogy, which everybody's heard before. I mean, it's like trying to eat soup with a fork. It doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. It just doesn't, it's not efficient. It's not going to work. And if you want to, if you want to get better at the game and if you love the game as much as the people here in Minnesota do, I mean, why not spend a half an hour with me or one of our other fitters to figure out how I can, how you can roll the ball better. And if I can roll the ball better, that means my speed's going to be better. Yep. And oh, by the way, you're going to make a couple more putts. And then your score is going to go like that. And you're not going to three down. putt. Well, that's, you know, that's the way to change. That's the way to change your game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You want, you want to change your handicap the fastest way in the world. Yeah. Go take your, I mean, yeah. go take your, go take your sand wedge and your putter and go practice. But first of all, Make sure they have. Make sure they're fit for you, mm -hmm. and then right. go. Pra and then go practice. And I'm going to tell you what. You're going to be really good. I mean, I can't tell you the times before there was tour vans back in the early '80s. I mean, there's guys hitting putts on the putting green. They walk over the curb and go boom. 
yeah, that looks better, and then go hit putt. I mean, they were figuring out on the, they were figuring out on their own. I mean, there was no numbers back then. They numbers, were just machines, figuring how. Yeah. yeah, they saw the ball rolling better. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's changed, but at the end of the day, it's still the same goal. Just still, get the club that still works. Still the same. Get it. Get a club that works. Get the enjoyment. You know, I mean, I, I like to, especially if somebody's really kind of a little bit lost. The whole goal is for them to go play after I fit them to go out and feel like maybe we didn't make any more putts, but I hit every putt solid. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a start. Yeah. I mean, this is baby steps. Everybody, everybody wants the immediate thing. You know, hey, it takes PGA Tour players six months to change their golf swing. So if you think you're going to change, if you think you're going to be overnight, it's not going to be overnight. Yeah. But if you go in, if you go in these baby steps, okay. Now I've hit everything solid. Now my speed's better. Oh, now I haven't three putted. Oh, now now all of a sudden, I turn my eighty two into a seventy seven. Mm -hmm. Home there you run. Go. That's that's a solid five step or five stroke. Yeah, save. And, and right you there. really haven't done much with yeah. the other thirteen clubs in your bag. Right. If um, you play that many. Let's. We'll wrap up here. Okay. We got a fun one. Um, from Connor. What does getting fit look like for the casual weekend golfer who just wants to have fun but also wants a nicer set of clubs? What does it look like? Yeah, what I mean, you know. But is that fitting process different, I guess, than Well, first of all, you know, the, coming coming to get fits like going to the dentist. This is this is real no, it's not. I mean people <laughs> walk people walk in all the time and they're just amazed that, you know, um, and especially where, you know, Minnetonka, where it's myself and Aaron Roth in the back yeah. bays and, you know, and we're having fun and you, you bring it and people are like, man, this is, this is, I, this is enjoyable. Yeah. I'm like, it's not going to dentist. This is not like taking a math test. <laughs> this isn't, you know, this isn't hard, you know? So does it look, no, it really basically doesn't look any different. I will say that based on how much they play, yeah, that really takes me to a different place. You know, to me, there's you know, I hate the word, I hate game improvement. Yeah. So to me, there's user friendly clubs. You know, there's kind of that players distance. Yeah. And then there's the player stuff, which is blades and everything. So really, based on how much they're going to play in practice, you know, it really gives me an idea where they need to go. Yeah. You know, then looking at their looking at their launch conditions, it's pretty much you know I've 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 had people hit three swings and start walking out and they're like, "Where are you going?" I'm like, "Well, I'm going to get you your golf club." <laughs> and they're like, "Really?" I'm like, "Yeah." You so know, it's the same process. It's just same process, but it just but the, the actual clubs themselves. I'm going to make sure that if you're going to have if you're gonna, you're going to have a set of clubs in your bag, that if you're going to play and you're going to put them and all of a sudden six weeks later you're pulling them out, you haven't played. It's going to be the right set of clubs, you yeah. know. Um, we we do a lot of times too, uh, you know. If you want to get a full, if you want to get a full bag fitting, well, hey, maybe I don't want to spend three thousand dollars on a hole. Okay, well, let's focus on a good set of irons. Let's focus on a good drivers, and we can fill in. We can fill in with used fairways and hybrids. Yeah in used wedges and, you know, a used putter and, and keep your cost down. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, that's a daily question. I mean, that is, kind oh, of yeah. a, that is a daily occurrence that when somebody walks in and we basically interview them, where do you want to go? You know, what, where, where, what level do you want to get yeah, to? At some level, it's not what, not what it looks like. It's what you want it to look like. Because, yeah. you know, it's, it's ultimately your needs that we need to kind of help take care of so. see but that's a that's a you know that's a that's a really good question but it's a question it's a question in golf that goes to every it goes in fitting it goes in if you're giving somebody lessons mm -hmm. you know you you have to sit around yourself sit around and going okay you know what maybe i'm a seven handicap i really want to be a three or a two or i want to try right, to get right, to scratch right. mm -hmm. okay what does it look like? How do I get there? Okay. Do I need, do I do that through clubs? Do I do that through lessons? Do I do that through hard work? The answer is all three, of course. Yes. Right. Of course. But 
to start to come in and get a set of clubs that you can enjoy. And, you know, hey, my wife, Melissa, just started playing golf again. You know, put some stuff together from some game improvement things I've had. And she went out and played and she's like, oh, my gosh. And I'm going to tell you, I pulled her driver and her seven wood out of our out of our bin, out of our bin at Minnetonka. Okay? Yeah. You know, clear been over paid, paid a, I think I paid a rocking 15 or $18 <laughs> for her driver in Sevenwood. But it was an older Callaway with a lot of loft and a driver. Yeah. Senior flex shaft, senior flex Sevenwood. Absolute, she just absolutely loves them. Hit them great. I mean, you don't have to spend, you don't have yeah. to spend a lot of money. You know, it's kind of like, what's the goal? And we'll get there. Absolutely. That's what we do. That, that's why I think we're the best. I also think we're the best at doing that. But Absolutely, it's, it's all on. about yeah. When you're getting fit at second swing, it's about what you need, and you know, in your budget, and then ultimately what helps you play better golf. So, I think that's a good way to wrap it up. Well, and I'll give you one more th on that. You know, everybody thinks we're on commission. Oh, and we're not. We're not. Yeah. You no, know, I'm. The, that is actually a common thought I've seen. You know, it's like yeah. You know, oh, they're we're, getting we're paid to do this. You know, no. you know, I. You know, hey, you're coming in. I. You want to get well. Geez, you know, I'm not going to upsell you anything. I'm going to sell you what's good in your bag because, you know what, everybody walks out of that bay has got my email, and I give everybody my cell phone. Yeah. Okay? So I don't want you calling up going, you know what, I, I spent $3,500 and these things are terrible and whatever, blah, blah, blah. That's not my style. And I right. would have never came to work the second swing if it was commission-based because right. I think that's a terrible way to sell, to sell and fit golf clubs. Yeah. It's uh, it kind of clouds those motivations where Absolutely. you know here it's about you and what plays best for you. Yeah, so, totally. um, so Larry, thank you for joining. Another no problem. Uh, I know I know the people are gonna love this as they always do. So, uh, more insight, and we'll do another one of these here soon. Awesome.